Okay, noted, and we'll try to slow down just to fill your time, or we'll try to make it be entertaining for you <laughs> as we move. It's hard to control. Before, before we get going, I just wanted to remind everyone that we have a Google Doc available with um, to post questions as we go um, and any comments that you have. Um, so I just wanted everybody to, to be aware of that. Um, the, the link for it is at the bottom of our wiki page for Module 3. So hopefully you were all invited to this training in a more elegant way than Wally was here by his pointy here at Boss. Uh, as we started out in the course offering area, let's talk a little bit about some of the main user stories or epics that we were talking about uh, as we were analyzing and trying to do some of this design in this last phase. Uh, one is not too surprising that as a student, I want to access the registration system to register for classes for a specific term. Another, as a student, I want to be added to a wait list for a specific offering. And thirdly, as an administrator, you're a student in one or more offerings. And hopefully in the registration area, you're going to see things that we all do in our current business and it's not going to seem too foreign to you. There may be a few terms in here that will be interesting or maybe you haven't thought about it in that way before, but um, please ask questions as we go. So Bob introduced a little bit about eligibility um, and so let's talk a little bit more details about this. Uh, we're basically looking at three different types or categories of eligibility. The first one being registration. And that's really the basic eligibility to register for a specific term, but not really um, regarding any of the specific offerings or how they're going to interact with one another. And I'll get into a little bit more details about this in uh, ensuing slides. There's course eligibility, and that's the eligibility to register in a particular offering. There's schedule eligibility, which is the eligibility to register with regard to the offerings in the registration cart and all offerings that are already on your schedule. And so we'll talk a little bit more down the line about a registration cart, but we'll just plant that seed with you because most of you have done some sort of uh, electronic shopping and probably have an idea about what that cart is. So this is a different way to represent kind of the, the funnel effect when one thinks about when you first start the registration process, you're really part of the population that is represented on this slide by all of the white space. You haven't really tried to pursue the registration part of things first, and that really is your first, your first step is really, can I access the registration function of the system? And it's all going to be about evaluating checks and basic kinds of things, and we'll talk in a little bit more detail in the next slide about that. Course eligibility is really trying to answer that question on a specific course offering. Can I add or drop this offering? And it's going to be pulling into things that are going to be like prerequisites, et cetera. Student schedule eligibility is really about, okay, I've assembled this, this group of things that I want to register for. I have this large request, as Kathy mentioned earlier, and can I submit it? Is everything playing together properly? So again, here are the three types of eligibility we just talked about. Um, there's a column there about when do they come into play, and we've talked about that a little bit already. I want to show you some examples, perhaps, of each, and what activity might be enabled or prevented in the process. So again, about registration, we're talking about um, prior to being able to get into the registration card. It's things like pre-registration checks, are we sure that the person has no holds, has he or she taken care of mandatory acknowledgments, that kind of thing. And of course, if you don't pass those checks, you're going to be prevented from accessing the CART, although we do realize there is some necessity at some early point for students to start saving what they want ahead of time, and that will be a configurability issue, we believe. Talking about course eligibility again, again, it's while you are in your registration function trying to put things into a CART or remove things from your CART. It has to do with, as I mentioned, requisites. It might be a major restriction. Is there truly space available or not? those sorts of things that really relate to that particular offering. And really, they're the things that will either enable you or prevent you from being able to 
um, add that to your cart or to remove it from your cart. So schedule um, eligibility here is all about submitting your cart. And it may be things like you have two different offerings and they overlap with one another, or it may be something that's already on your schedule that you registered for prior, and in this current session, you're trying to add a new uh, offering that does conflict. We also realize that different institutions have different rules about conflicts and whether they prevent or not. But again, it's all about preventing, preventing the submission of your registration request. So we know that there are rules that stand in the way that keep you from being eligible for something. Well, we know there are reasons why exemptions to those conditions need to be uh, appropriate. So we have exemptions and we have overrides. The key point about the exemption concept is that it's a persistent ability to allow an activity that would have otherwise been uh, prevented. Some examples um, are, could be exempting a request due to a life experience that you have, but really we know that students need to be able to request an exemption. Administrators need the ability to create and apply that exemption to a student. Comparing that to an override, the key point about an override is it accomplishes the same thing, but it's a one-time non-reusable ability that allows the activity to be accomplished. And it's something that could be employed by administrators uh, when a requested exemption is not appropriate in a particular case. And for example, we talked a little bit about that time conflict or overlapping of courses. There may be a situation where it's, strictly speaking, not allowed according to the rules, but it may only be five or ten minutes. Both of the instructors have said, okay, so let's allow this to go forward. But it'll be just that one time. Bob introduced the concept of registration cues a little bit earlier. You heard a little bit about wait lists and hold lists. Uh, you will hear Kathy probably call a hold list a hold until list, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, basically, what that wait list really is, is an ordered list of students who wish to register in an offering for which they're eligible, but there's not enough space. Um, some of our institutions have wait lists now, many of ours do not, and I know that we uh, anxiously await this capability. Uh, as Bob alluded to on one of his slides, there's one way onto this list, and that is when you're trying to register and there's no space, you physically go in and get on the wait list. There are different ways to transition off, whether it be in an automated way when automatically your, your uh, space opens up and you're first on the list, you automatically go in, or whether it's done manually uh, or somewhere in between. Those will be uh, things we will explore uh, in the de parallel de development stage. The hold list. Uh, is really, again, an ordered list of students, but these are folks who want to register for an offering, but they are not eligible. The difference between that and the, and the, and the wait list, of course, is that these folks do presume at some point they're going to become eligible, and so we do want to keep a hold of these things in an ordered way so that when the students become eligible at a later time, if there is sufficient space, they can be brought in. An example of this might be if you have a physics 300-level uh, offering that's only open to physics majors until the first day of the term, uh, and after that point they're open to all majors, then a mechanical engineering major would be eligible after or on or after that first day of the term and could, if there was space, register from a hold list. Questions on those concepts before I move on to the next? Okay, so we have a couple tools envisioned at this point for the registration action. And as I mentioned before, the registration cart is one idea. It's a holding place, as you might imagine, to collect those offerings that you want to submit in your request while you've been browsing a catalog or looking at a schedule of classes, that sort of a thing. Uh, these are intended to be highly transactional, not a planning tool. We know that in academic planning, there will be future releases of um, Kowali student that will have some kind of capability to, in the planning tool, build what your ideal schedule might be and then to be able to uh, interact with the registration cart with that. It's just not in enrollment one. And it's, again, the, the idea that we want to have the ability for students to be able to add to that cart and save it ahead of time just so they can kind of get their ducks in a row before the crunch really starts during registration time. Another type of tool we have nominally called one-click it may or may not end up being called that, uh, either due to uh, 
trademark infringement or something else, but what we want to get across to you is that this is really the idea that there's not much overhead with this. It's about taking a single offering and adding it to the student's schedule. All, of, all the required eligibility checks would be applied, however. So we're going to pass this over in just a second to Christina to do a demo uh, of wireframes and registration. And really the kinds of things she's going to talk about are how students search for offerings. She'll show us how students select those offerings and place them in their cart, what indications might look like of not passing eligibility checks, um, see how students submit those carts and what the results of that submission look like, uh, how they place themselves on a hold list or onto a wait list, and what might look different for an administrator in doing that registration. So turning it over to Christina. Okay, so this is the this is the um, course registration, and you can see this is the first screen. If you just follow that link, this is the first screen you'll see. This is, again, there's a path flow, and then we get into the registration screen. So this is where the student comes in. This is that first level of eligibility, I think, that um, she was talking about, is can you even register for the next term? Um, that might be whether re registration is open or not, or whether you have the correct um, status to be able to register. If you can, you can come in and start to see kind of your registration environment. And over here, you've got your schedule. Here's the registration cart that he was talking about. And here's where the work of that, um, that you're going to be doing happens. So right now, the student isn't registered for anything. And they can search for courses based on departments. Um, there's a couple of other ways that are shown here, just as, as starters of, of ways you might be able to find a course. You know the course name or number, you could go there directly. Or this is something that there isn't support for yet, but it's the idea of searching by a general education requirement. Right now I'm just showing that this based on, um, based on department. And it doesn't matter because it all goes to the same place. So these are all the, the courses in this department. And the students, if you're looking at this on your own on, online, um, the things that are green are the things that you can click. There, otherwise, there's no reason for those to be green. It's just that that indicates, oh, this, this is the next thing you're supposed to do. So that's why ensure the screenwriting is green. So I can click on that, and I get some information about the course, where, when it is, where it is, who's instructing it. And if I roll over, I can see that on my schedule where that would appear. This course will assume that it's, it's a really popular course, so the student wants to use one click and register for it right away. That's going to give them the option of whether or not they want to pass fail or let a grade, and then they can register now for it. Now that course is in their schedule. It's blue, they're registered for it, and then they can use that course as either their anchor course or if it was one of those really popular courses, they've been able to register for it as soon as the registration window opens without having to get everything in their schedule or, or wait at all. So now they've got one um, class in their schedule, and then for the next bit, they'll use the registration cart. So then they can look at this one and see a couple of other different options. And this is all showing that there's just one activity option. We were talking about earlier the idea of the, the format having potentially having multiple options. This all has just one, one um, activity. It's just a lecture, but there's four different times you can take it. And so the student can come in here and see that these two are full. And if they wanted to get into this specific time, they needed to have Monday afternoon, they'd have to join the wait list and hope that some people dropped the course. But these other two times have space available, so he can add it to his cart, and again, they might have this um, grading option. Once they click Add to the Cart, then they have one course in their cart, it's showing up in their schedule, and showing up in the registration card that they've got one course that they are going to register when they, they do this. One other thing you may have noticed, there were, there's two buttons here, Submit Registration and Save Cart. That's what you mentioned, is that you might want to come in here either before your registration window is open or during your registration time, but just pick all the things you want, save your cart, and come back and actually submit it later. Maybe they want to check with their friends or do 
some other thing. They can save everything in their cart and come back in and submit it later. Um, this is another, another course that they're interested in. Both of these are full. This is showing that they've, they've actually got a conflict with something that's in their cart. So they're going to put join the wait list for the other for the other course, the other section of this writing a short script. Um, one more is going to show one last class. They have space in their schedule, there's space in the class, so they can add it to their cart as well. And so then they're looking at you're you're seeing everything they've done to be added to their schedule in one course that they want to join the wait list on, and they can submit their registration. Here it's going to show them this is what you're adding, this is what you're going to be waitlisting. This will have the following effect on your registration account. You'll have three classes total because it's going to add two to the one you already have and give you a total unit. This is also showing that there are um, fees associated with this. And we'll get into that. We'll look at that a little bit again a little bit later, but it's going to show them what their estimated tuition and fees are. Then the other thing to look at here is this, this um, registration availability option. This is, there's not service support yet for providing students with this choice to say as many of these classes as possible or all of these classes or none of these classes. That kind of uh, configuration of how the registration cart works is right now set up to be at the institutional level. So there would have to be some communication with the student about how that would work, and it might affect how they use the registration cart in one click, depending on which, which way that goes for them. So once they've confirmed that this is what they actually want, they're going to submit their cart. And of course, the student wouldn't get to choose whether they want success or whether it's not full, but for this demonstration, we can. This is going to show that it's checking your eligibility, confirming that there's seats available. Because while that was in the cart, perhaps if it was saved, for a couple of days, the course might have filled up in the meantime. And then processing it, showing that, yes, you're now registered for those courses. So by closing that out, then you can see I've got this course, this course, this course, and this course. I can see my estimated tuition and fees, how many courses I've got. And that fee that I was talking about, the nine, that $25, is going to be added to their, um, to their estimated tuition and fees. Um, I also wanted to show some of the some errors. This is what would happen if your cart is you can't get all of the courses that you want, only available some of them. Then you can join that, and you're actually not you're only in two courses, not in all three like you wanted to be in. And you have some options of either joining or getting off the wait list, um, or trying to find some other courses. Another thing to look at is going to be here. These are the button options. One of those classes that we saw um, here. You're looking at a class and there's button options. This is just a diagram of those options. And this is showing that when you're, it's your time to register and there's space available, you, you get to either add it to your cart or um, join with one click. If you're eligible, but it's not yet your time to register, then one click is not going to be available to you, but you can still add it to your cart. If you are eligible, then your option would be to join the wait list. If you're not eligible, but you will be, that hold list concept, then you would be the hold list option, that you can join the hold list and, and wait until you are eligible and then it's going to put you in the class. And then the last thing that you might see is if you're not eligible, you're just going to see you're not eligible for this class. You're missing it. And rolling over, it might say you're missing a prerequisite. And you can click, you can click to get more information. You, we might even be able to do something there where it would give them information on what to do if they think that they should be granted an exemption or they want an override, what the next steps would be so that we don't actually make that a dead end there, but it's, it's just a, a path to getting more information if they need it. Um, the last thing I was going to show was the admin registration. So if an administrator is going to come in and just directly register a student for a course, their, their process could look a lot different. They could just come into the course roster, see all of the students that are in there, know that they've got either maybe they've got the student with them there in the classroom or they've got a list of, of people that they need to add. They can add a student 
put in their ID or their, their first and last name. It's going to check to make sure that student is actually eligible, confirm that there's a seat, and then add the student to the course. So then this student, this last Madeline Merriweather, is now added to the course. If they need to remove the student, for them it's very simple. They can confirm that they want to remove the student from the class, get a confirmation, and, and remove them. This process for the admin registration, um, like with all of the, the registration wireframes and prototypes, uh, it's pretty preliminary, so this is kind of just a, a sketch to illustrate how that might be able to happen and one, one option for that. Um, I think that I have now hit everything on Hugh's list that we wanted to show. Um, are there any questions or Hugh, if I forgot something, let me know and I will show it again. Well, hi, um, we had a quick question about information presented with the course offerings. Um, I saw there was a link for uh, a download to course syllabi, but would there also be the ability <clears throat> to have links to textbooks used by the course, for example, which is a higher ed reauthorization requirement, and also an ability to link to course evaluation results? Well, the first one, I think that all of the, this, this again is our, what, we, what came out of the work that we've already done. So all of the questions you're asking is part of parallel. I think that's the work that we're going to be doing. And whether or not we can do that, I, I think that's what's going to come out of that. Second question, I don't, I don't think I understood the, first, the um, textbook, but what was the second, the, the evaluation? Can you, can you? Um, yeah, so I, let me see if I can take that. Um, I don't think either of those has emerged as a requirement yet. Um, I mean, sort of not specifically. We don't have a specific requirement that's been documented that we need to be able to link to textbooks. We don't have a specific requirement documented that we need to link to um, course evaluation. My sense is that's probably not an E1 piece of functionality, but um, again, that's probably something we need to dig into when we get into parallel development. But to date, those have not surfaced as requirements. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anything else anyone wanted to see? Okay, then I'm going to give it back to you.